Hello and welcome to another video on Back of the Net. I'm Mr Tiggs and this special video today is in response to recent newspaper speculation about who the next manager in the hot seat at Dean Court will be. It's been reported by the Mirror newspaper that our executives have made a play for Patrick Vieira. This echoed speculation in February that we had shortlisted the formidable Frenchman before giving the job to Jonathan Woodgate. How close were we then? How close are we now? Sampdoria are also linked with him in the Italian papers to replace Ranieri. With very little drip breadcrumbs dropped by the chairman, Jeff Mostyn, earlier this week, it's difficult to know if there's anything in any of these reports at all. However, if it is Vieira, what are the cherries in for? Reportedly highly regarded by the City Football Group, Vieira went from a coaching role at Man City to be given the manager role at NYFC, New York FC. And after his spell in New York, he left the States to return home to France, taking over at Nice. Starting promisingly, he improved the team's standing from the previous campaign to finish seventh in his first season. And his following season, he improved again, finishing fifth and securing Europa League football. However, in his third season, results dried up and he was sacked after a five-game losing run. Some pointed it to a lack of a clear footballing philosophy. He swapped formations randomly. There was a number of confusing summer transfer dealings. Regardless, any statisticians out there might want to know that his career win ratio so far is very similar to Eddie Howe, around 39%. But what about his time in New York? What of the man, the manager, Patrick Vieira in the MLS? Well, I'm joined today by Michael of Blue City Radio. Hi, Michael. How are you? Thanks for having me on, Tony. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on as well. Um, so I thought, Michael, we'd start off with just a little summary of how Patrick got on in the United States. I'm, am I right in saying that when he joined New York, things weren't really great? They weren't tearing up trees? No, things were not great at all. This was the uh, start of their second season. Their first season was uh, miserable. Uh MLS uh, has a playoff format and New York City FC was unable to uh, reach the top uh, tier and, ma and make the playoffs in their first season. And uh, Jason Christ, who had spent some time with Manchester City uh, learning the system, was, uh, was let go immediately following the team's final game. Actually, the team had a friendly game on the schedule following the, this, the regular season and Vieira uh, Christ was not even allowed to, to coach that game. They had the goalkeeper coach uh, coach that game. Uh, and then Patrick was brought in uh, right after that to uh, to start the second season uh, in 2016. Okay. Wow. So then from then on then, did things start to improve in New York? I mean, was Patrick able to, able to make a, a quick impact? Uh, definitely. I, I think what, what Vieira did when he got here, uh, first and foremost, is he brought a, uh, a level of – uh, notability to, 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 to the managing position. Uh, I mentioned Jason Christ spent a, a year with Manchester City and CFG learning the, the Manchester uh, f f system, but there was no respect from the, from the British players uh, or from the European players, I'm sorry to say. Uh, Manchester City and CFG had brought over uh, David Villa to, uh, to be their, their focal point player. Uh, Frank Lampard joined the, the team in the summer. Andrea Pirlo joined the team in the summer. And uh, in that first year, Jason Christ just didn't have the uh, the respect from those players to to get what he wanted done. And uh, Vieira definitely had that respect. Uh, one of the things that uh, of note was uh, Andrea Pirlo. Again, when Pirlo came to uh, NYCFC and was playing in New York, it was towards the end of his career. And even though he's a uh, you know an, a, a world star player, a class player. Uh, Vieira was forced to make the tough decision to make him sit most of his final season just uh, because he didn't have the, the tools necessary, uh, the, 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 the physical ability to, to continue to play against the um, Major League Soccer talent. It's a very physical, demanding league, very similar to a championship uh, level team. And it's, uh, it was just something that Pirlo didn't have the, uh, the legs to, 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 to you know, participate in. So as a player, we, we know he was a no-nonsense leader, he admired football brain. It's interesting you talk about him there, you know, being able to handle the bigger players and, and knowing how to manage them. That's something that can be very, very tricky. What else did Patrick bring to New York in, in terms of how you decided to play your football? 
Well, he definitely brought a, a people call it a stubborn desire to play out of the back. Again, uh, the the keepers that Patrick was working with in the beginning when he got here weren't the best uh, keepers play, to play with their feet, and he uh, he never let them get away with it. He never let them uh, uh, play long balls out of the press. His first season, uh, you know, everything had to be on the ground uh, within the in the in the defensive third, uh, almost to a fault. Uh, there was a lot of games that NYCFC lost because they were uh, he was just so. Um, stuck in his system and it wasn't a bad thing you know again fans can be frustrated fans can be upset about it but the at the end of the day the result was the team did improve and there was noticeable improvement from 2015 to 2016 so that was a uh, 2016 being Vieira's first season but then even still more uh, advancement in uh, the, the following years 2017 and then 2018 so uh, he he, in, he might have looked like he was a uh, being stubborn and, uh, and not, you know, not being, um, you know, uh, someone who was flexible in, in his ways, but he focused on the first year getting the team uh, to, to understand his system. And then in the following season, he allowed the team, the team to play with the freedom. It was just a matter of them making sure they understood the system before they, uh, he gave them that flexibility to play. It's funny, Michael, the way you're talking, you're, you're reminding me very much of our previous manager or previous, previous manager now, Eddie Howe, who, who he was, the same things were said about him, you know, the stubbornness not to change, but it meant that the team did, did improve and did play better football and did climb up the leagues. What was Patrick like with the media? Obviously, you had a, lots of interactions with him, but, you know, is he someone who was open or how was his responses to questions? No, very, he was very open. He was he would definitely be someone who would come back and ask a, a follow up question to to a, to a, a media representative. So, I can give an example: if you questioned his tactics or, or questioned the the uh, what what you, how you observed the game to go, maybe uh, NYCFC was playing too much on the left side, and uh, Patrick would, would question to say, "Well, did you pay attention to what was going on on the opposite side of the field? Was it was it a matchup situation?" So it was it wasn't combative. It was very much, a, a, and he, he did a very good job of explaining his decisions. And he spent a lot of time with the media um, to, to, to give us a, a comfort level and to make sure that uh, we understood what he was trying to accomplish. Because I think it, it would, he realized that we were, if, if it was a combative relationship, then it, when he made a mistake, what were we going to do but just criticize? But if we understood the uh, his his approach and his philosophy, when it didn't come off, we could ex we can kind of almost help 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 half write the story of why it didn't come off, and not be an apologist, but at least understand his, his structure. And I will say this is uh, the the turning point was in 2018 when uh, the first rumors of the uh, the transfer to Nice came up. Um, that was definitely a, a difficult time because again, Vieira was a uh, was basically forced to, uh, to to be very careful about how he spoke to the media. Um, at one point, he did travel back to France, and the comment we got from both Vieira and from the team was that he was going to travel. He was traveling to visit a sick relative. Um, well, three weeks later, he had you know he was he was playing his last game for New York, or I'm um, coaching his last game for New York, and was uh was on the way to uh. To, to France. And even in that last game, I, I had an opportunity to see him outside the stadium uh, when he was leaving. He hadn't made his formal announcement yet, but you could see he was, uh, he was emotionally uh, drained by the, by the situation and um, was saying goodbye to the fans uh, outside of the, outside of the gate. And uh, the, you know, the, the writing was on the wall at that point. You, you, everyone who was in that, who was at that, that event uh, could see that he was, he wasn't going to be back the uh, following the international break. And what about the fans then, Michael, on, on his decision to do that? Was there any negativity from fans or was it everyone pleased that he, he, he was getting onto this, this other job at Nice? I, I think it, it, the, the fans were split 50-50. Uh, there was a lot of people that, well, I mean, to some extent, some people, the, the American soccer fan, there are a certain amount that have connections to European clubs. And then there's other that are just... Uh, at Major League Soccer focused. So what they, when a coach leaves or when a player leaves, they don't care what they're doing. They don't, you know, they, uh, Jack Harrison is a player that played with uh, NYCFC and he's a CFG player and he's now with Leeds. Uh, half the fan base there doesn't care that Jack Harrison ever played for us. Uh, they, they just like, okay, he's, he's not on our team now. And I think that was the same situation with Vieira. I think mm -hmm. the fans that paid attention 
uh, and and really uh, embraced what he was able to do. Again, bringing us, he had two second place finishes in the uh, in in his tenure with uh, with New York City, and uh, that's not an easy not an easy task. In both cases, I we were very close within uh, four points of ta- of taking first place. So these these uh, decisions, uh, the you know, you think back to those lost points in different games and especially in that first season when he was so stubborn and stuck in his, in his way about uh, forcing a, uh, an understanding of the system. Uh, fans that paid attention were able to embrace him. Uh, but then there were others that, uh, that just, uh, you know, didn't care. I don't think he ever rubbed fans the wrong way. I will say in the Derby games, the matchups against our local rival, he definitely um, showed a, a heart and a desire to win that, um, very much endeared him to the fan base. That's interesting to know as well, um, that he obviously appreciates where the fans are coming from and and tries to come across in a way that they can relate to. Were there any negativities to, to his reign there in New York? Is there anything that you, you know, perhaps if he were to look back, he would, he would have changed. You know, it's funny because you mentioned something in the, in the intro, the run up, uh, some of the questionable transfers that Nice had done. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that would be one of the things that I would say people kind of questioned um, in Vieira's last season in, um, in 2018 with, with the club, he brought in a young Paraguayan uh, forward, Jesus Medina. Uh, Jesus Medina was touted to be a, a, a another uh, up and coming South American phenom. And in, uh, in Medina's first season, he, he didn't play well at all. Um, it was later discovered by uh, NYCFC's, uh, current uh, manager uh, that Medina, although he played much, much of his time in, in New York under Vieira uh, as a winger, he's more of a number eight uh, box to box midfielder. So it was interesting that some of the, some of the transfers didn't really come off. Now, again, with, uh, with CFG and the structure, the ownership structure that New York city has to go through, it's tough to understand who's really calling the, you know, making the decisions and calling the shots and major league soccer has a salary cap structure that, does prevent um, you know teams from being able to invest as much as they want, so that would be the only thing that I think people would be would be concerned about who who's uh, making the decisions about uh, the talent that's being brought in. But I do believe that if you gave Vieira the talent necessary, he can um, he can win the league. Okay, that's great. Um, and in terms of his overall legacy, then Michael, if you, if people to look back and kind of put it in a nutshell, his time in New York, what how would you like to remember him, and how do you think others will? Yeah, I, I think everyone would would say uh, he's a uh, he's definitely he's the first. Well, let's put it this way: he's the first winning coach in the team's history. So again, uh, Jason Christ, who is his uh, predecessor, uh, had a horrible season and continues to struggle in in the coaching reins. It's uh, it's a shock sometimes that he still gets um, gets jobs. But then again, I'm sure you see that in the in the English game as well. There's coaches that just get recycled, even though they can't. Yeah. They continue to uh, to underperform. Uh, Vieira replaced that person. And I think Vieira was the uh, the first coach that people looked at and said, okay, I'm proud to have him as a manager. And even um, people who were not Arsenal fans looked at him and, and he had that, that, you know, that, um, that class of uh, uh, that history of, of being a, you know, a, a world renowned, uh, world known talent that uh, it, it garnered respect and uh, everyone respected him for it. Thank you, Michael. That was really, really helpful. Michael, you've been brilliant today. Is there um, a way that people can get in touch or how, how do people follow you to find out more about you and what you do? Well, I, I appreciate the, uh, you know, the, the time and I thank, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, my uh, Twitter handle is at blue CD radio. Uh, you can find the podcast on, um, on, uh, on Spotify, Apple podcasts, uh, any, any, any of the podcast streaming services. And if you wanted to go back, uh, look at the, the, the episodes from Vieira's reign. There's a lot of audio from Vieira that we shared dur- during our episodes uh, when, he, when he was there. Uh, he, was, he was a great talker with, with the club and with the media. I went back myself, Michael, and listened to some of those. I actually listened to the one as well when Vieira left. Uh, it was following a defeat, uh, and you and the guys were talking, and you were talking about your different stories. And One of the stories that uh, sort of jumped out to me, um, one of your colleagues was talking about, talking to Vieira about the Newcastle job that was that was being touted around. Rafa Benitez was leaving uh, and they were looking for a new manager. And he asked Vieira, do you think that maybe this is a job you'd be interested in? And Vieira said, you know, I've lived all over the world. Uh, Newcastle isn't for my wife, which I just thought was lovely because it showed this humour as well from him. 
Um, so yeah, really, really good podcast, Bournemouth fans. Please do go back, check out some of his older ones to hear Vieira talking because it is is quite insightful and wonderful. Michael, thank you so much for today. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. And uh, where are you in your season at the moment? Uh, we are currently uh, seven games into the season. Uh, NYCFC sits uh, middle of the table, about fifth place. Um, but it's, uh, again, we have a new, a new coach. This is a coach's second season. Uh, and it, post-COVID, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a struggle. And uh, because of the international break, uh, NYCFC and, and Major League Soccer basically got a, a short run-up of seven games under their belt, but then they have to take three weeks off with the, uh, with the Euros going on and, uh, and everything. Yeah. They, uh, the, the league took, took, took some time off. Okay, well, all the best for the rest of the season and future seasons. And um, hopefully, maybe, Michael, we'll catch up again some point if Vieira does come to Bournemouth. Um, it is a very lovely place, Bournemouth. It's not a lot of people know about it in the world. So I'm hoping that his wife quite likes the idea of our beaches. <laughs> <laughs> you could hope. Thanks for having me. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Uh, it was wonderful.